I'm Drupanchi, founder of uh, Qua, and today we are here. Uh, we'll be, you know, chatting with Anuj Sharma, who is the founder of Butter Hi. Masala. Hi, Anuj. Hi, how are you? Hi, Anuj. Can you hear me? If you can hear me. There's some sort my of lag in your video. Yeah, I think my network is pretty sad here. Let me just go somewhere else. Uh, I'm in mountains, so it's a... Uh, oh. Just hold on. And it's been raining, so I guess. That's nice. <laughs> It's raining outside. The network is usually better outside. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, it's me? better. Okay, I'm yeah. just trying to can see you hear if me? I can. Uh, yeah, I can hear you very well, pretty well. Yeah, I'm there's a uh, the video is lagging a bit, but I can hear you. Okay, okay. Um, let me try and go somewhere else where I can sit quietly. There are lots of places. I can go. Let's see if I can get a network somewhere better. Okay. Can you can you hear me better now? Um, yeah, much it, better. Yeah, okay. Much better okay. actually. Okay. All right. So, hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. All right. Very happy to have you with us today, and we'll much. be talking about button masala and some sustainable practices and the need of sustainability in fashion industry in today's time. And before we uh, dive into it, I just uh, give uh, tell our uh, community a little bit about you. So Anuj uh, studied post graduation in uh, apparel design from NID, and then he went on to study masters in high performance sp uh, sportswear design from University of Derby, UK, and uh, then he fo uh, founded this uh, fashion brand called Button Masala, and it's a very interesting brand. There's no cutting, there's no stitching involved, and uh, a very sustainable uh, way of actually making clothes. And we learn more about the brand and the process uh, from Anuj today. So Anuj, if you could, uh, you know, just tell us a little bit about Button Masala. What prompted you to start this fashion brand? Uh, it wasn't really a prompt from anything. It just uh, that's how I am. I'm I'm born from <laughs> in Rajasthan, so I like the idea of uh, making things uh, simply faster, cheaper. You know, so. Uh, it wasn't for anybody else. It wasn't sustainability to save the world. It was largely sustainability to sustain yourself better than everybody else. Yeah. You know, to be to be able to uh, make things uh, uh, in much smarter way was always uh, not not again as I said not for anybody else just for myself. I really wanted to make sure that I could do that. So, was sustainability always a part of it from the very beginning? Yeah, even as a student, uh, sustainability was always a part of my work. I mean, uh, but if, when you're a student, it looks like you're trying to run away from work and trying to do mm. things simpler and you know like like that because you're supposed to learn the complicated things, you know. But I never really liked the complications. I never really liked uh, uh, ghagras uh, covered with embroidery. I never liked. Uh, anything uh, overly done uh, and uh, uh, in my work I always kept it as simple as possible I could I mean, of course as a student it was difficult but when I uh, started working on my own I wasn't really interested in fashion and eventually when I started doing fashion week uh, it's when uh, the most obvious thing 
that came by in my work was that I I would do sustainable work. Every every collection that I did was sustainable. Every collection I did was simply because I didn't want to spend so much to make a collection. Yeah. You know, usually people spend lakhs of rupees to make a collection. I would do it yeah. in thousands. So, uh, yeah, it's been there part of my life, and I'm all as I said, I'm also from Rajasthan. So sustainability has been part of uh, the whole culture, anyways. Hmm. That's amazing, and uh, making sustainability an integral part organically, very naturally, because there's a lot of uh, brands nowadays who are kind of greenwashing, and just use just because sustainability is trending, they are incorporating sustainability at least in their marketing practices. But having uh, the vision to in- incorporate sustainability from the very beginning, and that to very naturally and organically, just because you want it to be sustainable and not because it's something that's trending is is i feel very commendable and uh, having working on it from like years uh, before it was actually trending is again um, i feel very something very commendable and i really admire that aspect of button masala thank you uh, so i mean it's a very intrig i'm very intrigued about your process like there's no cutting involved there's no stitching involved so if you could just you know tell us a little bit about the process that you follow in making the garments I mean, uh, it's basically obviously there's so as as it, most of the people would know there's no cutting, no stitching, and uh, all I have to uh, do is to put buttons with the help of rubber bands. We tie the bu- uh, buttons could be anything, so we tie objects into the fabric with the help of rubber bands, and then we connect fabrics together with the same technique. So largely mm. we have uh, rectangular or square pieces of fabric uh, which are not cut and then draped on the body, and then. Uh, once we have put the buttons the way we want then we drape the fabric dif- uh, in different ways and see what works for us uh, how it looks good so each piece is unique each piece is draped uh, by itself each uh, uh, obviously then each garment can fit into any size and each garment yeah. can change the drape and become any other garment so it's a very transformative uh, system uh, that allows us to be uh, yeah transformative as well yeah so that's largely that, the process. We don't, we don't draw, we don't uh, imagine what the garment would look like. We largely make. That's uh, we keep making. Uh, so you just like start with a piece of slow-paced. fabric, yeah, and then yeah, and like you, you have a body to work on, and then you basically just work well, with the fabric. Dress, we have one. We have a dress form, and that's what we have for uh, for our work, which is great. Uh, so we have the, I think, the same size uh, one dress form that we've been using for years now, and the same uh, garments are then fitting everybody in the country. So we're the only company in the world which has pretty much uh, zero wastage. When people say zero wastage, actually there is no zero wastage. You can call it two percent, three percent, four percent. Zero wastage is pretty much impossible. But in some case, button masala is, uh, if not zero, I mean the fabric wastage is less, very little. Uh, rubber bands also get recycled and the buttons also get recycled. So we kind of uh, are absolutely like zero, zero point one, you know, that kind of uh, wastage company. Amazing. And, uh, That's amazing. E- even further, even further, because we're not producing sizes, we don't have waste, uh, like excess of the sizes or yeah. number of pieces, you know. If you make something, it eventually gets sold someday or the other. It doesn't get lying. We never had sales, for example. Because we never left. Yeah. Okay. So, so in terms of performance, like how uh, has the brand been received by the people? Since it's a very unique concept, uh, I'm sure like people heard about when people heard about button masala, it was absolutely uh, new for them. No, people have. Uh, I mean, if somebody hears the idea, somebody looks at the garment, they obviously love it. So. Hmm. It, Obviously, if I had heard about it first time, I would have also looked at it and then agreed on it or not. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, the response has been great when, from the point of view of a concept or a garment. Uh, of course, it's not as good as uh, it should be in, from the point of view of shopping or buying or uh, accepting it uh, holistically. And that's why we have been teaching all these years 
to people so that okay. it becomes part of the mainstream not by just selling it because yeah on one hand you want to have sustainability on the other hand you want to produce millions of products and sell it uh, which yeah. is not our idea we still we are even though the fastest garment making system we still produce probably the least number of garments because mm. just because we can produce does not mean that we should keep on producing and that's yeah. how it is for us absolutely i agree with that and that is something that we follow at qua as well instead of you know holding and holding and just stocking our inventories which eventually turn into dead stock and which eventually get you know just add on to the waste that we already have enough of we also work with limited quantities and limited styles so uh, that way i mean some way we are contributing actually to uh, waste management yeah. controlling controlling waste so that's yeah. good and while you're talking about sustainability i mean there are are there any sustainable practices that you have incorporated in your daily life daily life i mean okay i mean i've i've been uh, i've been living on my own i mean i live alone i'm a single guy so i live alone so all these years uh, I mean, i've been washing cleaning barta uh, jhadu pocha i i do it myself i i believe that the life has to be if you do something you take care of your I mean everything that you do you should take care of it of course i can afford yeah. to have a maid but i never i have never had a maid simply because i think it's unfair that somebody else does your work so my work my sustainability starts from there and uh, you know i can afford a car but i don't have a car i still ride a bike or you know uh, you know i still uh, take the cheapest mode of transportation and the uh, mm. most uh, uh, so as i said uh, personally i believe uh, work is aside work is the second thing but i would always judge a person or i mean i mean it's not fair to judge somebody on that basis but i would always look at a person and say okay you say you do sustainable clothing but you haven't switched off any lights before getting out of the room yeah i mean i don't even know if uh, the world has enough electricity or not i don't care i mean if i am taking a shower I don't take two hours. Uh, I don't live in a place where there's a water problem. We have twenty four seven, but I would still take a shower in half a uh, you know a, a bucket of water. Nobody's watching me. Nobody is going to complain about it, and it's probably the most uh, uh, convenient thing anybody can do. But it's not about who's watching, who's saying. I think if you don't live a life sustainably, uh, your work will never show in it. You know, work will never reflect that sustainability. unless you practice it in your daily life so first yeah. you have to practice it in your daily life and then bring it out into your work yeah and i mean just listening to you it's so inspiring uh having that sort of thinking and also actually following it actually living it so because a lot of people talk about it but only a few actually execute those practices in their daily life so i mean it's very inspirational that uh, your the way that you live in your life it's I mean uh, I might learn a couple of things from you. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, so I feel a capsule wardrobe is also an important aspect of a uh, sustainable living from the point of uh, view of consumers but I feel we don't know enough about you know having a capsule wardrobe. So any thoughts that you have capsule on capsule wardrobe and how maybe you know people can approach to building one? I mean, I, 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 I've probably not really uh, pro- uh, properly heard the word, but just hearing the word, I can imagine what it really means. It probably means that you, you have right amount of garments and they cover all your uh, uh, needs. Yeah. So you know, specific I mean, some staple pieces in your wardrobe that you probably can mix and match uh, with your other pieces in your wardrobe and dress up for different occasions instead of hoarding different pieces for different occasions. I mean, I mean, of course. Uh, if I say, "Oh, you have one black, one white," but then somebody will say, "I like red," then somebody will say, "I mm. like blue." So there is no one way of uh, having that capsule. Uh, a larger way of looking at it would be to have more uh, fabrics that can be draped around the body. We are a country which used to wear drapes, and from drapes we have moved on to tight-fitted clothes. Now each yeah. tight-fitted clothes has only one shape, whether it's a shirt or a dress or a yeah. trouser or a or a top. Now 
all it can have all can that can happen on top of it is an uh, embroidery or a surface ornamentation because there is no fabric for you to wear it differently you can't yeah. uh, i mean uh, you can't wear a dress uh, of course you can I'm, i'm not denying that but uh, the way we see it is always the same way yeah now if you look at amount of fabric that is there in all these tight fitted clothes uh, there's nothing left for you to drape but if you look at india about 100 years back uh, you would see everybody wearing the same white dhoti but yeah. they all are very identically they can be identified in different communities very easily so yeah. even though people uh, uh, people uh, uh, wore the same fabric they had different styles and different techniques of wearing it and there was huge amount of variety yeah? Uh, yeah now we all buy the the design clothes and we still all look the same because all we are doing is textile design um, even fashion yeah. is largely textile design because the shapes of the garments haven't changed in last so many years that i know uh no way of how you close the garment has changed no way you how you wear the garments has changed so nothing yeah. absolutely nothing has happened in the terms of garment making or garments or the shapes or the silhouettes uh, whatever has happened in india has happened in the field of textiles yeah and textile yeah. that has covered us in a very uh, tight way so if we start looking at drapes in our wardrobes fabrics that can be worn uh in different ways then we are obviously going to have everything covered but if you're going to start looking at say oh i don't have a kurta of this color and that color i don't have a formal i don't have an informal i don't need a casual there's so many occasions you're going to desire for it and you're never going to run out for an idea to buy one for it yeah so the only yeah. way to uh, control that urge and control your wardrobe is by having pieces of fabric uh which can be worn of course you can always uh take a shirt and wear it differently or take loose so anything tight is a problem if you have a loose fitted shirt then again you can wear a belt on top of it you can fold it and yeah. pin tuck it somewhere uh, it'll give you a different form so uh, large pro- larger problem is having fabric coming closer to your body and that's that just becomes your skin now you want to have different yeah. forms of skin for your body uh, so garment isn't any more garment it's a skin and uh, we're looking for different skin and uh, there's no end to a desire for a different skin but the garment isn't a screen it's uh, uh, a skin it just it's an it's a covering and uh, for for fabrics that will be very easy if you have uh, drapes involved in your like how one or two sarees could have been worn many different ways earlier times yeah dhotis uh, you know so same fabric could be worn in many different kinds of dhotis so that's that's the thing that's what i feel that's a very good advice actually instead of working with styles of clothing you you need to think about the fabrics that you want to have in your wardrobe and maybe just style them differently so i think that's a yeah, very helpful yeah. tip uh so uh one of the questions that we got from a follower is how can you make high profile celebrities turn towards sustainable fashion because people usually uh, get influenced by uh, celebrities but i feel not many celebrities uh, have been talking about sustainable fashion do, do you think that will help in you know encouraging people to towards sustainable fashion see it will help it will help uh, but in a very cosmetic way matlab wo pehn rahi isliye main pehn raha hu matlab ye kya matlab katrina kapde matlab i mean who wear i mean doesn't matter what they wear don't people mm-hmm. have brains in india of their own like why do you need a celebrity to tell us that we should wear uh sustainable clothes i mean you can take yeah. their help you can uh, increase your uh, reach to people to buy clothes again but again the idea of some them wearing it is only going to turn into more mass production of sustainable clothes hmm and then who knows it will even be sustainable or not it was it is i mean how did the polyester come into the country it was just different something different people were wearing sustainable yeah. clothes people wearing cotton people were stitching few garments a year yeah. then suddenly comes the polyester it would last longer so people started buying and then it was okay to buy one or two polyester shirts but people started buying mass quantity of shirts and this thing and colors and then somebody said you should have more colors and you know and then people started dyeing it differently and uh, you know unhealthy dyes and unhealthy production system yeah 
it doesn't end it doesn't end this will never end unless we stop looking at anybody else for inspiration unless we look at our own self and just change ourselves i mean i don't see a reason why we need a celebrity in this country to inspire people to uh, you know why i mean what happens to all the consumer can't they see that the world is getting polluted matlab yeah मतलब मुझे तो समझ भी नहीं आता ये कॉन्सेप्ट ही कभी कि सेलिब्रिटी कहाँ आते हैं बीच में और क्यों आ रहे हैं मतलब दे कैन इंस्पायर अस टू बी अ गुड एक्टर आई गेट इट दे कैन इंस्पायर अस टू बी रिच एंड पॉपुलर आई अंडरस्टैंड बट अपने कपड़े तो हम कम से कम खुद डिसाइड कर सकते हैं इतने तो बेवकूफ नहीं पैदा हुए ना हम लोग and you very rightly said people used to wear cotton and simple fabrics and simple styles and then i don't know what happened innovation happened polyester got invented and then uh, i don't know when it started but the situation is pretty bad uh, right now and we need to make a conscious uh, decision to stop making you know uh, so many purchases and just buy when we need something and buy something that would we- that we would wear for at least 3 to 5 years so I mean that's the mindset change that we need in people. I mean it also you one has to understand uh, garment is uh, aesthetic I mean I mean of course it's functional but function has been taken care of you don't have to go to a tailor to say the shirt should look like this the shirt looks like a mm. shirt everybody knows how and if you bought a shirt it will fit you in a certain way of course your yeah. personal fitting can be little here and there but that's not under the control of any system uh, but uh, the other thing that people buy it for is because they think they look pretty in it yeah uh, but which is which is in my uh, consideration and which was in my uh, understanding so far in life nobody looks pretty in clothes it's only our desire the onlookers desire to like somebody i can look at you and say hey, what a lovely pink because i like you we're talking and we're friends but if i don't mm. like you i'll say i won't come up and tell you oh you that's a very lovely pink but i hate you <laughs> you just yeah. hate the whole person or you just hate the whole thing clothes yeah. don't come in uh, i mean when you walk into a shop who pers- who pers- the first person tells you i like what you're wearing is the guy who's selling it yeah then then it's your mother or your father of course they are your parents they're going to like you then it's a neighbor's son or neighbor's daughter or or friend who you've been hanging around with why will they say you're looking ugly in a garment there is no one color that makes you look pretty there is no garment that makes you look pretty it's in it's what you do after you wear it is what defines your behavior yeah and once you understand that when you un- once you understand that then you don't have that desire of buying so much anymore i'm not saying that some color doesn't suit me that's my choice yeah. but once even if i wear it i like yellow but what if the rest of the world doesn't like yellow they will still complain about it or they will like it i might yeah. not like not like yellow but somebody else might like it so everybody has a very different choice the beauty lies in the eye of beholder now keep wearing clothes on the basis of wanting to attract people it doesn't matter it doesn't yeah. matter you behave well people will like what you wear people will like what you are i mean uh, raymond's is a uh, gentleman no it's it's the uh, what yeah. is it what is the tagline uh, <clears throat> complete men Now, how many yeah. people who buy it start behaving like a complete man how many maybe yeah. not even half a person but they spend all that time in trying to call it complete man but how many people wear that clothing but the one who wears even a dhoti banyan and helps you out in a situation he's a nice person yeah matlab kaise bhi bhadde kapde pehne ho if somebody helps you out in the middle of night he is a gentleman so it's never the garment we have made garments such a important aspect of our life even though i am a fashion designer and i sell it on that basis it, it, i really don't believe in it i don't believe that people look pretty in it i mean somebody when they ask me like am i looking good i'm always running out of words <laughs> i don't know what to say I mean, and i want to be truthful so i i am usually shut up like i shut up and i like okay what do i say you're looking good <laughs> but what if it, you don't look good to somebody else how am i going to be like mm. and you never look good universally ever ab yeah. apne ghar ke doston ki party mein ja rahe ho to kaun bewakoof bolega aap bewakoof lag rahe ho so of course mm. there is this thing of color form structure body types us pe kya acha lagta hai but these are all figured out identities and ways of uh, believing what's good and what's not 
but uh, you can wear a shirt and not look great in this country and wear the same shirt in another country and people say wow this is so nice so there is mm. no one aesthetics it's just the timing and situation and your yep. behavior largely and that sh- that is what should guide your shopping habits i mean buy it for yourself wear it for yourself and not for not to please others but something that pleases you as a as the buyer as the wearer so i mean yeah, that's a very yeah. good way to look at it uh one last question uh so any thoughts as a as a designer do you have any thoughts on workwear styling for women in india i mean there aren't many brands that uh, uh, provide you know wardrobe solutions for working women in india uh any styling tips that you may have for them i mean you know i have been working uh, it's it's a of course we our workwear is not indian again so it's very western yeah so our idea of workwear is very western like but when i go to a field i see women wearing uh, a sari and still be working in a field you know uh, so uh we have defined workwear as a very uh, very like a crisp sab kuch crisp hona chahiye pant mein fall waisa hona chahiye but our clothes don't really need crispness hmm we can have fluidity in our clothes so i think if we have bring fluidity in our clothes i'm not saying one has to dress up like a you going to the party but uh i suggest that one should always dress up based on the environment which is how hot and cold it is now yeah. most of the offices are now air conditioned so you have to wear a layer of garment but which is again unnecessary first you make the place so cold by paying so much money to air conditioning companies mm-hmm. and to electricity and then buy another 10000 rupees dresses to cover up that cold so yeah. i mean the whole system itself is quite a uh, um, and and now you see a lot of people who actually a lot of women who wear sarees and have been trying to jump around dance and uh, you know uh, you know do acrobatics and all of that because it is possible to do it that way yeah uh, it's not necessary to you unless you're running like 100 meters at an olympics or asia or another level uh, you know at a national level you don't need to wear uh, tight fitted clothes to Uh, you know have that body control that way we can easily wear loose clothes and once you start wearing clothes that are not really very well like you know fitting is something else and having garments loose is a, so you can have a loose fitting garment and you can then manipulate it many many ways so of course we need to yeah. get very indian in our approach to the workwear and uh, again as i said earlier it will automatically bring solutions to the variety and bring variety to the clothes that you wear yeah and like we just discussed you know it's more about what you are comfortable in and especially for work working women you have to spend long hours working at your desk in the same pair of uh, clothes right so you have to be comfortable and power dressing is all about you know what makes you feel confident about yourself and your work and it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a blazer or or a dress right it can easily be a salwar suit or a sari uh, again it's all about you what's giving you the confidence what's giving making you feel comfortable uh, i feel uh, it's completely on the wearer and that's what power dressing is all about and uh, thank you so much uh, that is all that i have thank you sir to uh, ask you and i think some of our followers have much. been asking you to show us the mountains if possible <laughs> no. no let's see if i can uh, i don't know if I... there is mountain but uh, it's rainy so pretty much yeah. everything is everything is yeah there is all those mountains there but it's all beautiful oh, yeah. for us for the one sitting in delhi you know it's it's very pleasant to look at it <laughs> Yeah, it, it is quite nice. It's quite nice, but it's been raining, right. so uh, it's pretty gloomy. And uh, yeah, I mean, you would love right. to have a rain in Delhi, but here it's been raining for yes. some time now. So, okay, amazing. Thank you very much. Enjoy Thank the you. weather. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Anuj, for taking out the time to join us today and have this important conversation with us. And I wish you all the best with Batni Masala. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so Thank much you again. Thank you, everyone, for jo- bye. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Bye. 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 Bye.